Hello everyone, welcome back. In today's lesson, we will look at visibility concept, also how to blink objects using analog values in InterSCADA. Let's get started. Okay, kindly like and subscribe and also don't forget to press on the notification bell so that you always be notified whenever I upload new videos. Alright, so we have our project open now and in the last tutorial we looked at uh, diagonal movement in InterSCADA. In this lesson we will look at the concept of visibility. Okay, so to demonstrate this we have our previous diagram on screen and then the concept is this. Now our task is to move this object around this particular object. So we move from point A to point B, from B to C, and then C to A. Okay, good. Now, how do we achieve this? All right. So now we will apply the movement concept to this, and then we'll see how best we can achieve this particular task. Okay, so the first movement is going to be from point A to point B. But then the data that we are using for the movement is still from 0 to 100. Which implies that if we want to achieve this tax, we need to divide this particular data in three sections. So from point A to point B, we can give it a specific value. So we can choose, let's say, 30 for that. From point B to C, we give it 30, adding up to 60. And then from point C to point A, we can give it 40. And then it's all sum up to 100. So we have our object here, so we double click to add the properties. This is going to be our horizontal movement that is going to be from point A to B. So I click on the horizontal property. For the level, it's still going to be the same. We are still picking the level from the level 3 slider. And then for, for the slider values, we are saying that we will move from 0 up to 30, which is correct for the horizontal. And then from the distance that we are supposed to move, we are starting from 0 up to a certain value. So we need to calculate. So I click on OK. If I move here, I have 350. And then when I come to the end of the line, that is 860. So 860 minus 350, that is going to give us 510. So if I double click and I go to vertical, we are moving from left to right. So left is 10 and then right is going to be our 510. Sorry, left is 0. And then right is our 510. We click on OK. And then we move to vertical. So for vertical movement, the data that we'll be using for the movement, we've moved from 0 to 30. So we need to continue from 30 to 60. So here is going to be 30. That is going to be the top. And then our end point is going to be 60. That is going to be the bottom. OK. And then we need the value for the distance. So I will click on OK for now and then do the measurement from here. So the vertical measurement is going to be from this point, which is uh, the y-axis giving us 50, and then when I move to this point, 400. So it's going to be 50 minus 400, and that's going to give us 350. Okay, so I click on the same object, go to vertical. We've already stated the data for the movement, which is going to be 30 and 60, and then we will start from the top zero, and then we will end. At 350 so I click on OK and then OK again so now let's go into runtime and then observe what happens okay so we are in runtime now I move the perfect so we can see that 30 we've moved through A to B and then when I move I'm able to reach C but then we need them to move from C towards A so we will look at that one quickly so we go back to the development page okay good so we could realize that we were able to move from point A to B and B to C. Now then we need to move from C to A. But if we look at the properties, we have made use of the vertical and then the horizontal. There is nothing like uh, diagonal movement we are making use of the vertical and then the horizontal. And it's the same property that we've used to move from A to B and B to C. So how do we achieve this? This is where visibility comes in. So the visibility concept is that we need to draw another object. So in the development page, we'll be having two objects. But then in the runtime page, we will need to make one object visible and then the other invisible. Then we will be able to achieve our target 
by moving the object totally through so that on screen it will look like one object moving through but in the development page is two objects that we've assigned properties to okay so let's do this quickly to understand the concept so i need to draw another object so i place the object somewhere around this area okay so we have our object drawn now so now let's apply the properties to it so i double click on it first i go to vertical so our top value is going to be the maximum value that we reach which is going to be 100 our button remember when we move from a to b b to c we hit 60 so we we'll move a bit higher than 60 that is going to be 61 and then when we come to the up and down we need to measure so i click on ok ok again okay so my y value at this point is 440 and then at the top i have 90 so 440 minus 90 that is going to give us 350 okay so i double click on it i go to vertical and then here is going to be 350 but remember we are moving from bottom to down so our bottom value is going to be the, the bigger value and then sorry our top value is going to be 350 and then we'll be starting from zero towards 350 which is the top so i click on save and then we do that for the the horizontal movement as well so i double click on it again go to horizontal from here horizontal movement is still the the same we are moving from right to west left so our end point is going to be our left which is 100 and then right will be starting from 61 the same as that and here will also be changed as such but we need to measure so we do the measurement and then we come back so i click on okay and then from here the same point we measured the y which was 440 here is 860 and then at the top at 90 is 330 so 860 minus 330 and that is going to give us somewhere around uh, 530 so i double click on it go to horizontal and then the same approach we'll be moving from left sorry from right towards left so the right is going to be our minimum value which is zero and then here is going to be a 530 okay okay again we go to runtime now and then observe what happens okay so at runtime we have both objects showing if i move the cursor sorry if i move the slider i move from point a to b b to c and then now you can see that i'm moving from c to a but then you can see that we are seeing two objects here this is where we need to apply the visibility concept we need to let one object disappear so we go back to the development page and then we assign a property to this so if we come to the miscellaneous point we will see visibility if we double click on visibility we need to specify we have our expression here we need to give it a condition at which point it will be visible and at which point it will not be visible so we are saying that when the level is greater than because i delete this when the level 3 is greater than 60 that's when we want this object to be visible so when level 3 is greater than 60 then this object will be visible when it's less than 60 we shouldn't see this object so i click on ok and we can see that the visibility is ticked now and i click on ok again we can go to runtime and then observe so at this point i move and we can see that we, we are not seeing this object perfect but then this object must also disappear because immediately this object takes over this one must disappear as well so we go back and then apply the same I open this object and then go to visibility again but then this condition when the level is less than 60 that's when this object should be visible immediately hits 60 it should disappear and then at 61 this one will take over okay so let's click ok ok again and then observe okay so I move perfect so you can see that throughout the movement we are seeing only one object but in actual sense in our development we see we are using two objects to achieve this purpose okay so this is the concept of visibility we will now move on to look at how to blink using the analog values so let's say for instance immediately this object is able to hit point a i want it to start flashing indicating that it has reached the maximum point we want it to be okay so now we will apply the blink concept quickly to this object so that when it gets to the max it will start blinking indicating that it has reached the max so i double click on it 
and then I can go to blink under the miscellaneous tab and then we can see that we need to give an expression at what point it will blink and in this case the other blink that we did was to use the digital points but this one we are using an analog so we have to give an expression so the level we are saying that when the level once when we reach the max we should start blinking so when the level is greater than it can not go above uh, 100 so when it's greater than 99 then it should start blinking indicating that it has reached the max and we can see that we have the blink attributes here for now i've selected the blink invisible so let's see what that property gives us so i click on ok and then we go to runtime so at the runtime i start moving the cursor and we can see point b point c and then immediately we go to point A, we see the blink. So this is how we apply analog signal to blink objects. We will now, with this concept, we will now move to our conveyor work and then do practical application of this. So I go back to the development page and then I move to the main tab. Okay, so the main tab, we have this setup here. We have our bottle, we want to move from the top conveyor down to this conveyor and then we we'll move from this sensor to the end of this conveyor. Okay. So we want to apply the blink concept to this. But first we need to assign movement to our object to obtain the actual movement that we need. So the idea is this. We want to move this object to this conveyor. And then from this conveyor we move towards the end of this conveyor. So what do we need to do? We need to assign the distance from here up to this point to the first object. And whenever this bottle also reaches this particular point, which is our job in point, we want this sensor to blink. Okay, so to do this, we need to divide the, the signal just as we did at the previous point. Okay, so we apply the properties to this bottle for the movement first, and then we'll look at the blink as well. So we double click on this one. We look at the vertical first. So before we double click, let's do our measurement first before. So at this point, I have 120 for the Y position. And then when I move to this point of the conveyor, that's 300. So 120 minus 300, that is going to give us 180. Okay, so I double click on this one. Go to vertical. I remember the first point is for the data coming in. So the data is starting from zero. Immediately just to this point of the conveyor, we want to make use of 40% of our data. So we have 40 here. So we have 0, 040 because we are moving from top to bottom. And then here is what we did the measurement. That is from the top. Our value is going to be zero because we are starting from the top. And here is going to be the 180 that we just calculated. Which, which was uh, 300 minus 120. Okay, so we are done with the vertical side. So we can close and then look at the horizontal as well. So at this point where we have the 300, we also have the X as is to be 670. So if I move to almost the end of the conveyor, that is going to give me 1100. So 1100 minus 670 is going to give us 430. So we go back again we go to vertical and then our point we are moving from left towards right so left is zero and then right which is our maximum point that we are supposed to go is what we would term as 430 now the data that is going to do the movement let's look at it quickly remember we've moved all the way from the top to the bottom that is around 40 that we made 40 percent that we made use so we we'll move here to 41 and then our end point that will be the end of our data is going to be 100 which is correct so we click on OK, OK again. OK, so we are done now. We go to runtime to do our test. So it's a move the slider. Perfect, the bottle drops onto the conveyor and then move to the end of the conveyor. Perfect. Good. So our next action is that we want when the bottle reaches this position, we want the sensor to detect that the bottle is there. So it should start blinking. So let's apply the blink to the, to the sensor. So we double click. On it and then we can see under the miscellaneous just as we did for the previous one we have so i click on blink and then under blink we have different properties or attributes but then what we are interested in is the expression so we need to give a condition at what point it will blink so we are saying that we are using the level but remember when we move from the top to the conveyor point we've moved about 40 percent so when the level is greater than 40 percent then we can detect that the bottle is at that position that we have to start our blinking but remember we will also start moving we don't want to continuously be blinking 
but immediately we move we should be able to stop the blinking so let's look at this one first so if i save this and then we go to runtime let's observe what happens if i move the auto to this position perfect immediately the sensor start blinking indicating that we are at this position but even when i've moved away we can see that it's still blinking we need to solve this problem so let's see how we solve that so we go back again and and then in our expression that is the blink expression we can add more conditions so the condition is that we should be within range so we should be within 40 and we bring the same level again when level x must also be below a certain range so it should be less than 45 okay so within 40 and 45 we know we are within the range of the sensor and when we move away from there we need to stop so we click on ok and then ok again and then we can go to runtime and then observe okay good so immediately we we are here we start blinking and then when we move away we are away from it okay we can also blink this whenever we turn the whole system on we can make use of this uh, selector here which is switch 2 to start the process and then this conveyor needs to start blinking indicating that the conveyor is running okay so we double click on this we go to blink and this one we've done this before so we use the same expression because this is a data point that is going to cause the blinking so it's either on or off we go to runtime okay and we can see that immediately i turn the conveyor on we can see that the conveyor is blinking and then when i move the cursor and i'm at position the sensor also detects that we are within position and then when i can move to the okay good so in this lesson we've been able to look at the visibility concept and also apply blink to analog data coming in thank you all for watching see you in the next tutorial bye bye